Well, in a slight change to the plan programming today, we are exchanging experiment for nostalgia. The experiment will come next weekend, don't worry about that. But today, we are back for the third installment of my FM09 nostalgia trip. For those of you that haven't been following so far, over the last few months, I've been getting back into a couple of the old FMs. And I thought, as this is a Football Manager channel, we document some of our series. And one of the ones I've had most fun with is Hamilton Academical back in FM09. The reason I picked them and they were one of my favourite saves back then is because it was the Jimmy Mac era. James MacArthur and James McCarthy, who both went on to Premier League success and several other good young players coming through at the time. And I wanted to see if I could break the old firm, if I could keep the players and if I could push on to the next level. I won't spoil it just yet because if you've missed the first two parts, you can find them up in the eye above. But for now, we're going to move on to part three, where we reflect on the third season in charge of the football club. We're now in the summer of 2011. We've had a fairly quiet year off the pitch as we look to progress after our second season. We've added a little bit more depth to the squad. We've managed to get a few big sales arranged for the fourth summer. And we're now going to go for a slightly bigger push, but it might be thwarted financially by things that are happening behind the scenes. Well, here we are starting on my manager profile to avoid any spoilers because you can see firstly that my attributes have improved. You can see what tactics we've generally been progressing with and how we're being viewed at the moment. But Hamilton Academical have finished their third season. For those of you who don't remember or haven't watched for a little while, the first two seasons we finished seventh and then third. So this time around we had Europe to contend with in addition to the expectation of finishing third again in the SPL. We're trying to stay best of the rest while edging closer to Celtic and Rangers, maybe adapting our style of play to be a bit more attacking. And with the limited budget here, it's been about improving things off the pitch. So if we do have to lose any of our big stars as we go along, we may well be able to replace them with quality youngsters. Let's go and have a look at how we've got on in season three. And we will start with financial news. So before we go and talk about the commercial stuff here at Hamilton, let me talk to you about my own commercial department. And our partners for today about the offer they've got for you. For this video, we're proudly partnered with HelloFresh. HelloFresh are on a mission to make your meal times easier with pre portioned ingredients, quick and easy recipe cards, and plenty of treats we can get on board with too. Get 60% off your first box plus free dessert for life by clicking a link at the top of the description. Sounds good, doesn't it? I've tried it before, I'm a big fan of the brand and have helped with my weight loss this year too. There's healthy options available, so why not grab your discount and give HelloFresh a go from the description below. Well, season three at Hamilton has finished in pretty good nick because although we've wrapped up a third place finish again, you can see that we have got a slightly bigger transfer budget going for next season, has been improved slightly, and there's a couple of big sales potentially on the horizon as players that we bought in in the first couple of seasons to become those backup young players. To be honest, most of them haven't developed to a stage where they're going to become stars for us, but a lot of them have developed to a stage where they're going to be valuable for others. Now, the finances are better than before. They did get to four and a half million a couple of weeks ago when we got all our prize money in that. However, there have been a couple of big improvements off the pitch. If we go through to the club information screen, and if we go and have a look at the facts and the stadiums and facilities, we have now got a capacity increase coming to Hamilton Academical. Now, this is crucial because as we get ourselves into Europe more regularly, as we get ourselves a bigger wage bill with bigger players coming in, we're going to have to bring in more money to the club. It's the biggest thing that's restricting us compared to the likes of Aberdeen, Motherwell, Dundee United, who have all got five figure attendances most weeks. We're stuck at just over 6,000 seater. The board have agreed to add one and a half thousand, which will take us up to almost 8,000. Still not great, but it's a massive increase for us and does add a real opportunity to bring in more revenue. We are selling out every week, so we need it. Let's be honest about that. The average training facilities will also be getting a boost. They are now going to be upgraded at the end of this season and the excellent youth facilities continue to be maintained because we're in a very good position off the pitch. So there's the positives we've got to take after that early problem. Of course, we took charge in FM09 in their first SPL season. We kept them up, which meant they went for under soil heat and which put us in debt. So for the next two years to recover from that and now be in a position where we can still have a budget after doing these two things, 
is really impressive. I'm delighted with it. Let's go and have a look at on the pitch though, because we normally start with that. This time we're coming to it after the big stuff off it. We have finished third yet again, and four points clear this time of Motherwell, and a long way behind Celtic and Rangers, who won the league on the final day, having been six or seven behind not long before. Now, if we go and have a look at last year for a comparison, we finished on 62, and the top two were further clear, the bottom was a bit further behind. So we've made real progress, but we've not got any further away because Motherwell have progressed massively too. Now, they're probably the other side at the start of this save who had brilliant young players coming through. If we have a look at them, for example, Jamie Murphy, brilliant young striker who's now 21. Paul Quinn has now reached 25, good defender. Stevie Hamill, names that have become established in the SPL over the last decade or so. All of them have reached a very good level and become very good SPL players. And it also leads to some areas where I've had to maybe adapt what I would do in a modern approach to a builder nation save and a builder club in this sort of size nation to what I am doing here. Because in FM09, the likes of Motherwell and Aberdeen are going out and signing good players. Hearts, Hibs, the list goes on. They're signing good players from other clubs. So the actual rule that we put ourselves in modern saves where we don't go and poach players from other clubs in the nation, actually it doesn't really work out because they're replacing these players anyway. So one of the things I want to do in the summer is look at players that are going to be out of contract at the clubs in the SPL that are doing well. Now, Paul Quinn is one of those who doesn't want to discuss terms yet, but would be a really good addition to our squad. And Mark Fitzpatrick in the middle is another man who falls into that category too, also both at good ages. The reason I want to focus on free transfers is because I want to move our transfer budget over to the wage budget. It's the only way we can really increase that to a competitive level. And I want to be able to then sell them on for big money in the future, which you'll see is a plan we're continuing with in a moment. So that's where I'm looking at the moment. Motherwell being a candidate for that. There are a few others where we may be able to nick players too. But if we go and have a look at our performance over the year and how we've got on, it's been a really good season for us. If we go through to the fixtures, we have had European football for the first time. But in the SPL, we've had some great unbeaten runs. Actually didn't win a game after the league split, but didn't lose one till the final day when we brought in a few youngsters with third place secured. And ironically, us doing that and Rangers winning, combined with Celtic's draw at home to Motherwell, allowed them to win the division. However, you look back during the season, we've been a lot better at times going forward, but defensively, so many 1-0 wins, so many 1-0 draws. We are really tight with a couple of great young defenders who have improved to a good level. The problem I've got is a lot of those original stars They've got contracts till 2013 and they're unhappy. The two Jimmy Max aren't part of that, but there are a few others we may well be losing. So overall, a very good season in the SPL. Some great goal scorers. Again, Andrew Barrowman, very much star of the show, but we'll look at that in a minute. So there's big news on him. In the Europa League, it's been a really important spell for us. We managed to get through qualifying. Big wins early on against Kaya it was a 2-0 win at home that got us through and James McCarthy, followed by an away goal from Julian Gray that got us there too. In the group stages, we actually did all right. We picked up good points at home to Panathinaikos, away at FC Moscow and at home to them too. And the crucial draw at home to Fenerbahce gave us 10 points out of a relatively friendly group. You can see again, different goal scorers at different points, but James McCarthy really stepping up this year. Unfortunately though, the first knockout round we drew PSG, which was never going to end well, but we kept it respectable, 3-0 on aggregate, and I think we've got to be pretty proud of that effort for our first season of European competition. Has added a bit of money into the bank too. Unfortunately, those playing FM24 will remember that if you win a Europa League group stage game, you get 500 grand in the bank. Back here, no, it's very much like 17, 18 grand, not a huge amount of money. Let's go and have a look at the Cups where there was disappointment again. In the League Cup, we drew Celtic at the second attempt, unfortunately went out to them. And in the Scottish Cup, we got all the way to the semis, where it was Celtic, who were thwarting us yet again. We did have a fortunate draw prior to that. It doesn't matter. When we face the old firm, we're generally still coming out second best, though. So we have changed our approach towards the end of this season. You'll see it from the last league games, where we've just gone out and played our way. We've not sat back and changed the formation for them. We got a 3 all draw at home to Celtic, where we really went for it. We had that 1-0 against Rangers and we've had a go in some of those games, which has made me more impressed and more optimistic for the future. Speaking of that, though, we've got to focus on the players who have largely been the stalwarts of this save. 
We've got a lot of the original team still there. It was part of the lure of coming to Hamilton. We knew there were good young players for the future. And some of those early signings have really developed well. We have loaned a fair few out this year. We're carrying a squad of sort of 20 during the season and loaning four or five out. So the likes of Afsal, the likes of the Bulgarian youngster we signed and Adam Ferguson, they've all been out during the year. We have had a few very big signings that we'll reflect on in a minute. The star of the show yet again has been Andrew Barrowman in terms of goals. Not quite as prolific this season and with one year to go on his contract, he's unhappy and he won't sign a new deal. That means this summer he is likely to be the biggest ever departure from the club. Derby have offered £1 million. I don't think I can turn that down. It should mean that we'll be able to keep James MacArthur, who has signed a new deal until 2015 and is again absolutely sensational. Just a type of player that can compete at Rangers and Celtic level. As can James McCarthy now, who at 20 has just won Scottish Premier League Young Player of the Year, popped up with eight goals in the league, 11 in all competitions this season, and really found himself going to the next level, despite a little injury earlier in the year. Very impressed with him, and hopefully in the future, he can be the man we wanted him to. At the back, we've got two other stars as well. James Gibson, the left back, has reached a very good level. He's unhappy, he's got two years left on his deal, so he might be forced next summer if we can't break the old firm or win something big to maybe let him go because at the moment he's wanted by other clubs, feels it may be time to move on and he's been dropped from the Scotland under-21s as well, which seems incredibly harsh. The final one is Brian Easton, who I'm a little less certain on. Been very good, he's very quick and strong, but he's not the best in the air and he's not the best mentally. He's magnificent as a defender in the tackle. He's the one who's been the most unhappy throughout this save. And again, he feels he may need to move on. So next summer, we're not going to have a choice there. If they won't sign new deals, we have to let them go. There are other players that have been superstars. And you can see there are a few new names there, which we're going to look at in more detail in a minute. But there are some big decisions to make this summer because there are a few players that are out of contract, albeit the big ones we've got tied down. Julian Gray has signed a new two-year deal. Yes, he's 31, but he's not declining at all. He's actually been our best player or one of our best players both years he's been here. And then in centre midfield, Simon Mensin, despite a bit of unhappiness initially, has signed a new deal too. And in those games where we've got to be a bit more defensive in Europe or away at the old firm sides, he's a really crucial addition because he comes in and sits almost as an extra holding midfielder, but one that's got the ability to break into the box and score a goal. So I'm very happy with the squad we're developing, but it's not quite got there yet. You can see some of the other youngsters are improving. Adam Ferguson, the 18-year-old from the first year's youth intake, he's come through and done well. We've also had the likes of Gary Irving, who we signed the first summer, become a good player. But Russell Duncan is now reaching 32. So we've got a few players that are coming towards the end of their peak that we've maybe got to look at moving on. If we go and have a look, though, at the youth team, you can see there were no real brilliant players in last year's youth intake. It obviously comes back in FM09 in the middle of the summer rather than during the season. There are a couple of players with big potential. This one, the biggest of those that came through. John McDonald has got potential to be a decent left winger. His natural position is wing back or winger rather than full back. I'm not sure he's going to make it at our level. We'll offer him a deal. We'll wait and see. If we get an offer for that value of around 200 grand, I think I might be willing to let him go. Mike McDonald, the young goalkeeper, who I've clicked on the wrong player, he's also pretty good, came through the year before, isn't going to be good enough for our level, so we won't worry about him for now. Let's go and have a look at the transfer news, because that's where the big stuff has happened this summer, and that's where the big stuff will happen this year as well. We've got really fortunate that we've been able to sell players on for decent sums without losing our superstars, possibly Andrew Barrowman aside. We've also sold Jordan Kirkpatrick, who is in the youth team, and he does still have potential, but he's not really reached it. So to get 200 grand for him from Swansea, where he can still become a pro, he can still become a decent player, I think is a great deal. He's going to go over to England. We're going to maximise our income for another academy player. And to get 210 grand for someone that hasn't even got the potential of our first team backups, I think is absolutely sensational. A great deal for the football club. Alex Morrison is off to Lenetni for one grand. He's absolutely hopeless. And Matt Ritchie, a player that we signed for what? Nothing two years ago on a free. Has not developed a huge amount, but developed enough. He's going to Coventry for £40,000, but also with a 20% sell-on in case he does ever reach that potential. The big one, though, as we mentioned, was Andrew Barrowman. A £1 million deal to Derby. Remember, 
Inverness went down the first year. We signed him for £2,000. That is a profit that you cannot snub. It's an absolutely magnificent deal. We'll wait and see if it gets confirmed. If it does, we've still got Richard Offiong. Lee Griffiths has come back from a loan in decent nick. And there's a few free agents we could target too. I think that's the best deal in the history of the club if we can do it. The record sale prior was our one in the first season for Rocco Quinn for 150 grand. So we've broken that twice for a player in the youth team and a player who is out of contract next summer. Can't argue with that. We have also been busy on the other side though. We talked about a few players we're hoping to get in on freeze, a couple from Motherwell. There's a few others about too. I'm looking at people like Chris Baird, who's getting released from Fulham as an example of what I'm looking at. But this is one that we got pre-agreed very early because we thought Julian Gray might not sign a new deal. We knew that Matt Ritchie wasn't really making it and Mark Corcoran was moving on from the club as well. So I pre-agreed a deal for Killian Brennan, who we tried to sign at the start when Julian Gray had to come in. And he ended up going to Hibs where they've not really succeeded. If you have a look at his stats, it's not due to him. Five goals, 12 assists this season. And if you go and have a look at his history, last season it was 10 goals, 12 assists. The year before it was 11 goals, 7 assists. They signed him for 100 grand. We're getting him for free. He's only going to be 27. He's sensational technically. He's a great penalty taker, a great free kick and corner taker. He's quick. He's good mentally. He's just got the lot. He's a fabulous player. And to get him for nothing and just over a grand a week in wages, I think is one of our best deals so far. Add to that a deal we did on January on the other side of the pitch and a free agent from last summer. And I think you can see why I'm pretty chuffed with myself. We'll start with the players that left the club. If we go back to the summer, there wasn't a great deal really, just youth players and a couple of youngsters and backups. But in January, Mark Corcoran moved on for 16 grand. That's why Killian Brennan is coming in this summer and why Matt Ritchie is moving on. He was getting to the age where he was no longer at the peak of his powers. He was struggling with not being first choice and I just thought it was the right time to move him on. We also got 130 grand on the other side for Simon Richman, who we bought in as a backup right winger but didn't really develop to that level. So what we did is we sold him on to crew. Again, we've got a little sell on. But we've got over 100 grand for him. He's someone we signed for £16,000. Played six league games for us and then we got 130k. It's a great deal for the football club. He may well develop and reach a good level. And if so, we'll benefit from the sell-on clause as well. But if not, we've got well above market value there. Loads of other players went on loan during the year. You can see the likes of Lee Griffiths have come back good. John Morrison's gone to Bradford. He struggled a bit there. But nothing in terms of the real superstars of the club being forced to move on, which is crucial for us at this stage of the save. However, moving in... The name at the top, probably a lot of football fans that follow this channel will recognise. And the one at the bottom is a signal of intent for the future, a record signing in. Let's start with a man that you've heard of though, Keith Farhi, former Birmingham player, was released. We got him on a free transfer. Last season, we were very good going forward with MacArthur and McCarthy. But when one of them got injured, as we saw with about an eight-week spell with MacArthur, we couldn't cope. This season, we have. Farhi has come in. He's done okay. Three assists, two goals. He's largely played off the bench. So I'm not going to worry about his average rating and that. But he's another player of that ilk who's got great personality. He's a good free kick taker, good on dead balls, good passing and technique and a creative spark. Someone who can unlock a door. He's not the most naturally fit. He's not great for playing 90 minutes most weeks. But that's not what we need. So to get someone of that quality for 600 quid a week, to get him on a free transfer where now if we were to sell him on this year or next, we'll probably get a six-figure sum. It's again just clever business from the football club and I'll be looking for more signings like that this summer. Hopefully we'll have a bit more clout now after a good European year. Ronan McIntaggart was a signing from Simpats Athletic that came out of desperation. We needed someone else to compete on the right and in the middle and he offered us just that. It was a really good young player at 18 years of age, now 19. He comes in for a very small fee. He's worth more now. He played a few games for us the first half of the year, then went out on loan. Scored some big goals, by the way. Won in a European win. And I just like the fact that he's got a balance of attributes that should get him to a decent level. Again, we'll probably have a decision to make next summer, but we'll get more than the five grand we spent on him. And I just want to give him an opportunity. He'll probably go on loan next year. If he does well, we'll keep him. If not, we'll move him on. But a good signing for 5k nonetheless. He was toppled, though, in a January by our new first choice right winger and it's the reason that Simon Richmond left the club and I'm delighted that that fee covered half of this because Andy Haswell 
is the signal of intent. He came from Burnley, who here, don't forget, are a lower league side for 240 grand. He is an 18-year-old Scottish youth international. He is a right winger with bundles of pace. The one thing we didn't really have in our side was bundles of pace. He's got it in abundance. He's a brilliant player. He's a flair player. He's improving technically in certain areas already. You can see his average rating is nearly seven from half a season. He's getting that international experience too. And he's also, crucially, natural in all four roles. So as well as being our first choice right winger, where we've got a decent backup in Flanagan, if we do lose a couple of midfielders now, we'll be playing Farhi and Haswell instead of perhaps Menzi and a youngster, which it just shows how much we're developing a squad. Really pleased with him joining this football club. And I think he's going to be a superstar. Hopefully, he'll develop to reach that potential. So overall, not as busy a transfer window, but I felt it was really important to add quality rather than quantity to the squad. We're going to try and do the same this summer as well. If we look at some of the players that are out of contract, you know we've got Brennan coming in. We're looking at the two boys that at the moment are at Motherwell. You can see Fitzpatrick there. But you can also see some of the other players we've scouted. Players like Sam Togwell, Danny Granger, Danny Swanson at Dundee United as well. And even further up, we're going to try with some of the English boys who... The wages are far too big at the minute. If they get released and don't get a club, it might give us a chance to improve them. Alan Gow is one I'm interested in as well. Trying to tempt some of the sort of peak age Scottish boys back over if we can. And the one I really want, if I'm being honest with you, is Chris Baird. We'll see if his wages come down if he gets released. If he doesn't get a deal in the meantime, because he's wanted by a lot of big clubs, including PSG who beat us. He's a player I'd love to have at this football club. I feel we need to get a big centre half in this year. I feel we need to take a couple of positions to the next level. But overall, I'm thrilled with how we're doing. This is a football club going in the right direction. It's a squad that is a huge amount stronger than when we started. And it's a club that's going to have European football again. So hopefully we can continue to progress. Despite the fact we've invested in facilities, there's still a little bit of money there. It's just whether we can keep hold of those players and offer bigger enough wages. Let me know what you think, though. No, do you think we're going in the right direction? And when we come back next summer, Will it be having been forced to sell the likes of Easton and Gibson? Or will we be able to break the old firm, get closer in Europe and hold on to them for more than one season? Fingers crossed the latter will be the case, but let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this little nostalgia trip again, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe and turn that notification bell on to stay up to date with everything from the modern game as well. We'll be back every day next week with our FM24 long-term stories as our new one, the coach's head progresses, as well as a thrilling climax to the season at South End. While we do that, I will just leave you on this screen so you can see the talent leaving and joining this country. As I mentioned earlier, if you haven't seen the other parts of this save, you can find it up in the eye above. Let me know if you're getting involved and getting into any old FM games this year as well. LMA Manager 2003, that's been getting a bit of a while too. You can find all the other playlists in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel and the football podcast for regular content too. But thank you very much for watching, for being here as always, and I'll see you back here tomorrow as we go back to FM24.